All right, hey, what's up everybody? This is Jeff, AKA Poptoogie. And today I'm gonna to start doing Illustrator tutorials. Uh, if you've come here to watch my animation tutorials, I'm still gonna be making those. I wanna make a lot more um, just because my YouTube subscribers and my patrons have been missing out uh, quite a bit in the last couple months. I just haven't been able to make tutorials. So I'm gonna start um, by doing this, what I think is pretty cool is called Graphic Styles in Illustrator. Um, if you're a patron, you'll you'll still get everything in from my animation, but you also get things like this for Illustrator. And if you don't have Illustrator, I'll still be giving you some type of file, um, EPS files or JPEGs or something like that. Um, but yeah, check the description below. But I wanted to start out really quick um, explaining what a graphic style is. So basically, if you look at any of these text um, objects right here, they all have a lot of different effects. They all look 3D and have um, different coloring and gradients and outlines. And basically what a graphic style is, it's just the properties that you can save. So if I type something else uh, in this graphic style, you can see it maintains all of that, uh, all of those special effects without you having to redo them. So this is really helpful if you want to make like different characters but have the same kind of style next to them. Um, but I'm just gonna start making a new one just so you can uh, kind of get a grasp of what I'm talking about. So we're gonna start with uh, just typing um, some text right over here. I'm gonna call this Patriot. I'm just gonna make this kind of, uh, you know, Captain America-ish. And we start out with uh, just some regular text, black and white. So if you've never used Illustrator before, don't worry about all these other windows and things like that. We're just, just follow along and you should be able to, um, if you're using Illustrator for the first time, kind of see how this works. So we have a blank or plain text. First thing we're gonna look at is the appearance uh, window. So go under window and appearance and this window just basically shows you the properties of the object that you have selected. So right now there's not anything really, um, but if I add new, uh, add a new fill, it's gonna show us that the fill right now is uh, black. And we're gonna change it to a different color. Right now I don't have a lot of swatches or different colors to pick from in uh, when you select the fill. I'm just gonna make it kind of light gray so we can still see it, but um, I'm gonna make copies underneath it. So with that still selected, we've made a gray color. And if you wanted to use a different color, you can come over here and just double click on the fill. Then you get the color picker. And you can change it to what other, any color you want. Um, this has the white, all the hues uh, of color and then you can change the um, darkness and lightness over here too. But I'm gonna keep it kind of light gray then what I want to do is copy that fill and just put it underneath. So what I'm going to do is left click and holding option down, I'm going to drag and go to new layer at the bottom of the appearance panel and see it just duplicated that. Um, if you hit new fill, it would do that also, but I'll show you why we're going to do uh, duplicate in just a second. So now we want to make a red outline, but I actually want to make to show you guys um, how to ex offset or expand any object that you have. So I'm gonna select this second fill that's underneath. I'll double click the color and I'm gonna choose red. And if I click on the eye on the gray, you can see underneath it's an exact copy of uh, the Patriot text uh, just in red. But I wanna expand it a little bit. So I'm gonna select, make sure you have the red selected, your second layer and then we're gonna go under effect and select path and then offset path. So offsetting the path actually just means it expands its pixels outward of whatever it is. So if it's text, if it's a shape, anything like that, if I click preview, you can see it's offset by 10 pixels. So it's just making it 10 pixels bigger. And if I hit okay and hide the gray, you can see it's just expanded it outward. If I select the offset path, and click on it. If you have a mouse wheel, you can um, preview it and you can see that I can expand or contract it. So if I'm contracting it, you see it's getting smaller than the original black text. 
but I want to make it a little bit bigger. We'll turn that on so we have the gray and then the red underneath. Now the reason why that I said we're gonna duplicate the uh, layers and the fill is because I wanna hold option down, left click and drag down to new layer. And now we have the offset path, which is the effect that we just added onto it. So we can actually change this fill, select the bottom one. We'll do uh, blue and hit OK. And then when we select the offset path on the third layer, we don't have to go up to the menu and do it again. We can preview and then just make that a little bit bigger. So then we have a second stroke or actually not a stroke, a fill. A uh, stroke is just the outline. But now, now that we have this looking good, we're gonna um, change this fill color back to white. So we have three different uh, layers and three different uh, kind of effects on it. And now I'm gonna make a 3D effect. This isn't really 3D, but um, I just find this is a lot easier if you look at my other examples. Um, you can do a kind of gradients on this uh, trick which is multiple layers at once to kind of give you a shiny effect so we're going to do that again one more time hold option down drag with the blue bottom layer the third layer and we'll duplicate that again and this time we're going to open up a new window so go up to window and we're going to choose gradient and the gradient is Anytime you hear gradient, if you've never used a graphic arts program, it's just one color blending into another color. So if you look at the screen, there's a green gradient that goes from light to dark to light to dark. So I'm going to click on that. Um, if you don't have a gradient, you can actually make one. So here, let's hide. I'm going to hide the top. Oops, let's go. Put that gradient underneath. Oh, I didn't have the Patriot selected, so I didn't actually add a new layer. So make sure if you if that happens, just make sure that you have your object selected. So now I'm going to put the gradient at the very bottom. I'll hide these, the red, white, and blue. So now you can see there's a gradient underneath. We're going to let me turn those back on. So underneath we have that green one. What we're going to do is duplicate that green one and just move it slightly downwards. So this is probably my favorite tool in Illustrator is to go to the effect, distort, transform and transform. So with that gradient selected, uh, you can see when I do scaling, oh, turn preview on. If I do horizontal, it's going to stretch it horizontally or vertically, it's going to stretch it up and down. But I want to keep it at 100% for each one because we're just going to make copies of it. So I'm going to make just a couple of copies. Just I'm just putting two and then under the move, I'm going to move that down vertically. Uh, oops. Wait. Okay. Got that effect. Distort, transform, transform, make a few copies and then move it down. So there's four copies, let's do two and move it down just so you can see that basically it's moving, shifting down two different copies um, underneath the original one. But we wanna make them really close together. So instead of uh, 81 points, I'm gonna put 0.2. So it's barely m moving the copies and now I'm gonna add copies. I'm gonna click in the copies window and just use my mouse wheel to scroll up and you can see that it's it's, actually making a bunch of tiny little copies underneath or not tiny copies but they're only moving a little bit so it gives the illusion of 3d and I'll hit OK and when you're using a gradient we'll go ahead and change the colors uh, to be blue so I'll double click on this first swatch and I'll select blue from here and you can see uh, that it's changing the gradient in all of the copies as well so I'll keep doing that I'll double click here do a light blue Double click here, do a dark one again, and then do a light blue. And we can also just select right underneath the gradient, you see a little plus sign. You can actually grab the color that's in the color line and then duplicate it. So if I click next to the dark 
You see anywhere I add new swatches, it's just pulling that color from the line. But we're just gonna use a couple. And then we can also change the direction of how the gradient is being projected. Right now it's going left to right. So we can click on the gradient tool, which is right here. And then I can just drag it uh, up and down. And that gives us a little bit more control of where we're putting the gradient. And you can see I can actually move those swatches in, up and down anywhere over here. Um, so if I wanted to add some more colors, I could, uh, I'm trying to fine tune the bottom. So I want the bottom to be light. Oops, I think I erased it. And maybe put another one here. I'm gonna double click that color. Right, where is that? Make it a little lighter. And you can just keep adjusting to make it look uh, fancy. So basically, oh, let me show you one more trick really quick. So th there's three different layers and the gradient all together. And then there's other things you can do, like say you wanna put stars around this or uh, some kind of decoration, decorative line. I'm gonna draw a star and I have my illustrator set to whatever style was created, it's doing it the last one. So I'm gonna draw a little tiny star under appearance because the star selected, I'm just gonna clear it. So I'm gonna say clear appearance and we'll just make it red. I'm using the color picker. So this just chooses a color anywhere. Oh, it's choosing uh, the default black. Let's do, um, just do red. Just so we have a star here. And I'm gonna show you one more thing. So there's brushes. And I'm gonna make a tutorial all about brushes too. But if I open up the brushes and just click and drag that object, I'm just gonna make this a scatter brush. And I'll go over the differences of brushes uh, in another tutorial. But I'll hit okay. And this is just showing you um, different properties. But I'm gonna hit okay here. And while I have Patriot selected, now that I have a star brush, I am going to under the stroke, or actually let's go under window and stroke. So remember a stroke is an outline. And, or actually no, let's just select the brush. I'm mumbling now. Okay, let's just, any color will work. We'll hit brown and you can see if I zoom in, it made a brown stroke around the uh, Patriot uh, word. Or let's do purple so you can see it a little better, maybe. But I have the stroke selected. Now I'm gonna go under brush and I'm gonna select that scatter brush. And you can see it actually turned it to those stars that I just created, but I want them to be outside of the text. So we're gonna use the offset again one more time. So with the stroke selected in the appearance panel, let's close the brushes real quick. Doesn't matter what stroke, the color of the stroke is, we have the stars selected to it. But we'll sel select that layer, go to Effect, Distort Transform, or I'm sorry, Path, Offset Path, and then turn the preview on, and then you can just scroll it upward, and it's going to expand it outward as far as you want it to go. And it looks a little funny because we have that 3D type effect, but I'm just putting it way out there. Actually, I'm going to drop it underneath all of the other fills. And maybe, where's, let's select it again. Offset path. We can bring it in a little bit. Actually, let's just make it random. Because we have that 3D effect, it looks kind of weird. So we'll just hit okay. Now we can mess around with some of the uh, brush properties. So I'm just gonna select the brush, double click it. Then there's all kinds of things that you can do. So size, we can say random and it has we can go from 100%, I'm gonna bring this way down to like 14%, so it's gonna be 14% of its original size, up to 
and then we'll we'll bring this up to like 300 and some or hmm, maybe 130 so they're just random um, sizes and then also we can mess with the spacing we can um, space those out more uh, we can do that randomly too so there's kind of just a sparkling type effect um, and scatter will also do randomly and that's just to kind of put them randomly about behind our uh, text right there and I'll put apply strokes so this is what you can use as a graphic style um, let me close the other brushes I'll even close the appearance um, window and now I'm just gonna go to window graphic styles and you can see there's little icons these are just representations of the styles that I've made already so to create a graphic style do something with your text with several different effects and then just drag and drop it in there you can see it made a new icon and the other good thing about graphic styles is that um, you can use it on any font so if I do type the word style and I have my graphic styles open if I click on that style I made it just applies it automatically if I want to copy it I can hold option down move it type something else new and improved and it just has those stars behind it at all times and um, we can even change the font or the typeface itself and it always keeps all of those effects that we created um, from the very beginning which is really handy so let me shrink this down and you can just keep uh, adding to your collection so you just have a wide array and this doesn't have to be for text it can be for objects and stuff as well um, but that's that's it that's the basics of graphic styles if you uh, have any questions comments or concerns you can just let me know in the comments down below the reason I'm doing the uh, face recording is I want to differentiate uh, these tutorials from my animation ones just so you guys can tell right away what's what um, so if you like it let me know um, if you have any problems with making stuff like this uh, also you can just send me a message and um, I'll see you next time thanks for watching